Hello and welcome. I'm Clueless Mike. And I'm the rest of the skies, huh? But together we are... Modelling for, for Advantage. Advantage. Whoa, whoa. Very much. So, uh, you're in the command chair I today. am, it feels very good over here. I've got oh. all these special buttons that kind of like do all kinds of magical stuff over here. Awesome. And I Kirk noticed I've got a waistcoat that I could slide on if I needed it. It'd probably be a bit loose on you, so I'm a bit broader in the middle. A bit broader in the middle. Anyway, you brought a thing along today. I did, I brought this just a minute. I've been doing a workout so I can pick it up. We have this, the Ooh. Warhammer 30K, Ooh. the Horus Heresy, what's the exact name? Age of Darkness box set. It is, and I've been playing 40K for 20, 30 years. This is the heaviest bit of 40K stuff <laughs> I have ever held. It is massive. So we're gonna open this today and see what you get inside. Nice. Okay, I've had this for two days and I've kept the cellophane on it just you're so we can do a proper You're making one. me wobble. <laughs> I know, I know, it is. I'm not sure how much it weighs. I reckon it's at least four kilograms. Right. It's, it nearly weighs as much as my son, I think. Wow, <laughs> I'm just seeing the camera go, boing, and you put it down. Okay, I'm gonna put it down over to the side so we don't have to lift it so much. For the very last time. All, All right. right. Oh. So th this is the new. Uh, do you remember what this was? This was was this a gift from your beautiful wife, sir? So uh, not so much a gift. So this was a. I phoned my wife up and said, "Can I buy this?" Type of All thing. right. Yep. 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 Because it's not the cheapest box in the world. It's not as expensive as I had feared it would be. Mm. And I think it's a right bargain, as we'll go into later. So um, I decided I wanted to buy it, and I'm going to take some of the bits out of it. I'll probably sell on the bits I don't want, because best one in the world, I don't need 40 more tactical marines. Yeah. I have at least 60, so... <laughs> yeah, yeah, you've got plenty. All right, so as you decant then, should we say what, what's yeah. up? We've got some whippy sticks, we'll come back to them. Whoa, we all remember these from we our do, childhood, hitting our mates with these. They're pretty painful, and they look like... I mean, you take a look at that. That looks like the exact same mould they've been using for yeah, the past mate. 30 years. Yeah, fact. <laughs> you can almost cut yourself on, on some of the edges. Yep. Yeah, yeah. But if you're not sure how far 18 inches is, yeah. is this much? It's quite a way. And these really do. <laughs> they do. They, they are they lash. names. We have, again, <laughs> templates. templates. They're back. We remember these. They got rid of them because they said, nah, you never want templates. And never now they bring them, them again and give them to us. They are again the exact same template sprue they used to use. I have many of them at home. So we we have seen that in Necromunda and yeah. in Adeptus Titanicus. Aha. Uh -huh. They hadn't quite given up on the templates. No, they hadn't. And let's see what we've got inside. So we're going to go through this bit reasonably quickly. We have two single sprue characters. They've obviously made this box to sell as single parts in the future. Yep, yep. So there's not mixed sprues like and you these get in are various. Your, these starters. are your preters. Yeah, these are your praetors who I think, I haven't read the Legion rule book as yet. Um, I think you can kind of like, you buy a praetor and then you can give it upgrades so you can make your praetor into a librarian. You can make your praetor into something else. You can kind of like give him a speciality. I think that's how it works. That's how it used to work in the previous version of 30k. Okay. And I think it might in this. Both these models are really nice, but they are monopose, which is not one of my mm. favourite things. And they're quite distinctive and characterised. They these are, are they're really nice. Models. Like this, there's that one there, who I think will make an excellent oh. space wolf. Sorry, I didn't throw it far enough there. He's got a giant great axe. This is, this is a fat guy with a massive axe. Yeah. yeah, look at this. And there's this one I think oh. makes a brilliant blood angel. He's got a really cool looking sword, which I suspect practically would not work at all. It's the one with the holes in the length of it. Um, but I think it's a really cool looking sword, and I think that's the model I'm going to kind of make as my army general. Right. Let's see what else we have in so here. So, Praetors are what? They're, they're, they're basically like, captains. They're captains from the yeah. legionary times. Yeah, You um, when you make up a 30k army, you can basically, for every, I think it's 750 points, you get to take a, a Master of the Legion, I think it's called. Right. And if you take one of those, they then let you take a specialism for your detachment type of thing. Um, it sounds more complicated than it is. It's basically, it lets you make your army in a different These way. These people play 40k, mate. They're well, not exactly. complex. It's much simpler than that. <laughs> right, uh, but you right. get to take, um, basically, a, a way of making your army different. So if you're a Blood Angels, you can choose to take, it's called a Rite of War. You can choose to take the one that means you're all jump packs. So you all come down from Deep Strike and stuff. Right, And right. it means you just have to take stuff for jump packs. Or you can make one that's all Dreadnoughts and things like that. Nice. But you, to be able to access those rules, you need to have at least one Master of the Legion, which a Praetor right. is one or a Primarch would be one. Right. What is next? We have Terminator Screws. These are 
Tartarus Ca Terminators. Oh, not Cataphracti? Yeah, I believe they're Tartarus. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, they are. They're Tartarus ones. Yeah. So the Tartarus um, are, the, are the nimble ones. They're the nimble ones that have the kind of like the little the little roby bits coming down their shoulders. Oh. Uh, you get two squat two uh, sprues of five in here. These are the exact same sprues that have been out for years, and they were in the Betrayal at Kalf box or the whatever the other box was called, they released two. Burning of Prospero. That's it. They were in one of those two. One had Cataphracti, one had Tartarus. They're the exact same models from that. They're pretty nice models, um, and they're a pretty good unit in both 30k and 40k, so looking forward to them. Yep, um, and, and these are, these are pretty um, similar looking models. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so you, 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 you're more posing at the arms is, yeah, is exactly. mostly what you've got. That's all you've got. And, but the arms are quite nice. Like, I particularly like the lightning claws on these. If you look at yeah, those, they're yeah. very, they're very, you know... Yeah, they're proper. They look horror like looking. Horus claws. Yeah. In, instead of being a big fist with some Wolverine spikes, yeah, they're, yeah. A, they're a glove with daggers for you. fingers. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. So I think they're pretty cool for that. And on here, you've only got Storm Bolters and Power Fists and Lightning Claws. There'll be upgrades for the Sergeant who can have a, a backpack mounted rocket launcher and he can have, um, oh, right. I think he can have a Volkite or something. Right, and I can see the, the Terminator Heavy Flame, a few Chain Fists. Yep, and I think there might oh, yeah. be a Auto Cannon on there. Yeah. Then I'm trying to identify all the stuff in There might here. be another sprue for this. There is quite possible. Yeah. So okay. there is a lot of plastic. There's, there is more plastic in here than anything I've ever had. So let's have a look at some of these. I'll pass those over to you. Are these all the same? These yeah. are all the same as far as I can tell, and they go with that. So these are 40 Legionnaires. So these are basically a tactical squad in 30K, days. which are very similar to tactical squads in 40k, except they don't get any special heavy weapons. They all just get the same bog standard bolt gun. So we've got various sprues here. These two sprues are exactly the same. And this sprue is exactly the same as well. So maybe I've given you four sprues at the same and I've still got four. Ah, there we go. I have, no, that's another one. I have four sprues exactly. I have four the same. identical sprues here as well. Okay. Should we do a swap? Yeah, I'll give you those two. And I'll give you those two. <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm that's. Long enough for this game. Ah, that is exactly the same sprue again, it looks like. Oh, wow. So eight sprues exactly the same. I wasn't expecting that. I'd assumed you get 40 in the box. I assumed it was 10 sprue, uh, 10 models would be distinct. But yeah, it looks like there are, these are exactly the same. That's really interesting. So, yeah, right, what well, I just swapped with you, yeah, and the ones, the ones that you just yeah, gave me. Yeah, there are definitely me. five of each on this sprue. Yeah, five guys. That's interesting. So on the sprue we have um, five bolt guns, five torsos and sets of legs. Interestingly, unlike traditional Space Marines, these are Kind of like mono pose model. So instead of having a set of legs, which is traditional, and then a torso, and then and then, a, and, then a... and then arms that go on the side, it looks like they've still got the arms on the side technique. Mm. But the legs and the torso are all one part with kind of like weird angled cuts. You can stick one particular leg on. Yes, so that's a bit disappointing. I was hoping um, they would be a bit more multi pose than that. Yeah, especially as this is this is the kind of like the basis of what they want you to make entire thirty k legions out of. Yes. Uh, the other things you've got on here, you have different types of bayonet for your gun. Oh, yeah, we've got, you've got the traditional uh, big blade, yeah, reminiscent got, of RTB-01. you got your chain one. bayonets, and there are different rules for those. Oh, What's really? That? Oh, have a look at the end of the sprue. That is something strange. The shoulder pads yes. come in halves. Well, I, I don't know if you'd noticed that, Mike, because I was looking at one of, the, one of the shoulders, and I don't know if you can see this, but it's actually keyed. Ah. There's there's two little there's little knobs on the shoulder that that you fit the two yeah. halves of the shoulder pad too. Now why on earth they have done that? I because the other shoulder pad, the one for the the other arm. bobbly side, yeah. is like a normal shoulder pad. Exactly. But surely exactly. you're just going to end up with a mold line down the middle of every shoulder. Well, if you use plastic glue, you're not going to. Well, yeah, but still, that's, that's it just, very yes. strange. It is. It is a bit. And mad. it's just going to be fiddly, sticking two curved bits of tiny plastic it together. It does seem unnecessary. It really does seem quite unnecessary. I don't know why they've done that. Yeah, that uh, is very strange. That side. Interesting decision there. Uh, yeah. So we have forty of those, but actually only 
one sprue times eight. But there may be, as we look at the other sprues, there, there is. So here is for you, that is an upgrade. We've got four of these. This is an upgrade sprue to go with it. And on there, you've got some different heads for your sergeant. It looks like it's all the sergeant weapons. It's yeah. got a power sword, a power fist, a lightning claw, a yeah. crest for the head, bayonet a melter bomb. And it looks like oh, it's actually got different bayonets. So you can have the chain bayonets from the normal one, yeah. or you can have the little pointed daggery bayonets, which and are a bit more traditional. All your bolt pistols. Yeah. Uh, a cool back banner, which I think yeah. have rules in 30k. A lonely power fist. Yeah, the lone power fist, which yeah. weirdly again has has the the fingers separate to the fist. I've never seen that before on a power fist. Mm, let me have a look. Oh gosh, yeah. I'm trying to find the fingers. <laughs> trying to find the fingers. <laughs> oh, they're down at the bottom by the power sword. Oh yeah. They're I down, mean, they okay. They, they, they are more detailed than the traditional fingers, but I'm not sure it was. Hugely well, necessary. I think actually with um, um, because I've seen this in a lot of other model kits. Mm. I think stuff like that, the, the 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 smaller detail things, they just can't get the fidelity as part of a bigger part. Yeah, and because those are short fingers and and open, I think that that might have been necessary. I wonder if they built in any posability as well, because usually a power fist is a closed fist. Mm. But it can be cool if you have it partly open. And, and that's how these fingers yeah, are. Yeah, and then you could model it to grasp something as well, which yeah. makes it a more interesting modeling yeah. thing. You can have it grasping the head of an orc boy and making it go pop or something if you want to yeah. design it that way. So we've got uh, what I assume is a, is a Volkite pistol rather than a plasma pistol. Yeah, a Volkite pistol. Um, and and then a few, a few trinkets. A load of holstered pistols, which are incredibly yeah. detailed for a, a holster. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. There's lots of, there's lots of yeah, stuff Yeah, loads on those. of detail on that. Now, so this, in and of itself, as a single spot, I think this is all right. Yeah. You know, I'd gladly have one of these, mm. you know, or, or, or two of these for my existing Space Marine collection. But if that's it yeah. for, for all of my Legionnaires... That's how we take these 40 of these and we've got to somehow make them all distinct. By mm. doing this. If you were building all 40, I don't intend to build all 40, mm. but... If you're building all 40, they're going to look very similar. I suppose that's part but is, of But is that part of the idea? That's though? part of the legion, I suppose. Yes. And yes. also, these models are designed, this particular um, part, the Mark VI models, are designed that all the new, they're now releasing special weapons and heavy weapons that just come in kits on their own. So you mm. buy your heavy weapons and you get a plasma gun, you get a plasma cannon, las cannon, multi-melter, and you get like 10 of each. And they're designed to go on these bodies. Mm. So... You're supposed to have loads of these spare to turn into those. But yeah, interesting. I, I dislike, especially if the legs and the torso were movable, you can make yeah. them a bit different. I mean, you, you're going to have a match. very uniform look, yeah. aren't you? Um, so, I mean, one of the things, the, the thing with getting so many, like with a lot of these kits, having 10 different Space Marine yeah. bodies to mix in with my existing Tactical Marines to give yeah, a bit of variety. Exactly. Well, that's another thing. The height really nice. is slightly different. Is it? Yeah, so I've, I've done a bit of research into this. So, I mean, you, you can see if you pick up one of the sprues, they're not quite Primaris size, but they're, but they're rather long legs. Definitely legs-ed. bigger than an old Tactical Marine. Part of that is the posing. I mean, we all know the old squat pose of the old the, Tactical the, Marine. Yeah, yeah, the RTB-01s like are very up. squat, weren't yeah. they? Um, these are significantly larger. If you line them all up next to each other, there's not a massive difference, but you'll see them kind of like going up slightly. <laughs> right. Like a tactical marine's quite small, but then a stern guard's a bit bigger. And then if you stick it next to a, I think the tallest of these basic space marines are the um, ones you get in the prize boxes in Japan. Yes. The, yes. The heroes, they're space they're heroes. bigger. And these yeah. are slightly bigger than those. Well, I have some of those with my existing space wolves, yeah. and they don't look terribly out. No. Of and I think if you mix these in, they look fine. If you had one short one in a squad of. 10 then, yeah, then it would look, it look funny yeah but if you've got five and five or four yeah. and three and two of different armor marks i think it'd be fine okay what have we got next there are two vehicles left in here i think is this we got covers left? yeah they're quite one of them that, is... that's it for the for the variety in these brooms yeah. i think um, i think one of these vehicles is very large right uh, so we have here the new contempt to dreadnought kit now I love a Dreadnought, do I? And that's one of the reasons I have this box, because I wanted the new Contempt to Dreadnought, and right. I knew I'd buy one on eBay, so I thought I might as well just buy the box. Right. Um, so here we have it, and it's fully multipose. This is interesting compared to these that we've just looked at. Mm. This is fully posable. This right. is like a Forge... I don't know if those of you who have built Forge World Dreadnoughts will know that they are 
incredibly poseable. All the knee joints all come in separate parts. You can bend the knee in whichever way you want. Mm. All the other bits. But You're I'm talking also, about the, the resin ones? Yeah, the resin ones. Mm, Poseable is one way of putting it. That they are it, a it, pain it, in the ass to a put beast together. To assemble. They're just <laughs> blocks of resin that you and have to glue. Interestingly, usually if they make a plastic model that does that, like a lot of the Tau models, I'm thinking of the Riptide, for instance. They're kind of stuck in a pose. The Riptide, for instance, is fully poseable, but the joints come with little pegs in them. So if you build it via the instructions, you've got a leg that can go all these different directions, but it'll have a little peg in it which locks it into this position. Right. And a little peg in the other leg that locks it into this position so they'll sit flat. But you can just lop those pegs off and then pose them however you want. So if you want right. it leaning against something. Um, this has got the posability of that in that there's, it can go in any position, but it doesn't have any pegs. So for somebody who's not the best modeler, I think they could end up making it so they've stuck it together with their plastic glue that doesn't dry instantly and it'll all just come forwards into a, a sitting position or something. So on that, I've seen that with the Redemptor. Yeah. There's quite a few. One of the kids at school has got one. One of mine ended up a bit like that. The way that you make the leg assembly yeah. is it's possible to do it so that the whole thing is leaning backwards um, and it looks like they're all a bit like, whoa. Now, if you were making a sort of beyond the fell handed, he's had a few beers yeah. before he comes out. <laughs> but you can definitely, with that, with that possibility, yeah. you can end up, as you've assembled this tall model, with quite a weird looking You can, pose. and this is a lot more poseable than the Redemptor even. This is fully right. articulated at every joint. Right. Uh, one of the other slightly annoying so things So would, would you build that from the feet up? Uh, so first of all, you, I like to... I like to envision the pose. So I sit there and I put it in my head and I go, I want him to be leaning this way with his gun arm out there and his fist up here. And it seems weird, but do it in the mirror and look to see which way your torso is turning. If I'm fisting this way, sometimes I'll be turned that way. But if I want the head going that way, you'll notice how your torso turns depending on where your arms are and envision your pose to start with because this model can be built in all kinds of different ways. Envision your pose, then start with the legs. Because the important thing is you want to do your legs so they're holding the torso flat. And, and fixed to the base. Yeah, and fixed to the base. So Flat. Dry fit it if you can. Little tiny bits of blue tack will hold joints in. Right. So stick yeah, those in. Tip. I mean, this is this will take you some time. It's not a quick mm. thing. If you want to do it quickly, then... Yeah. Then this I mean, I'm just not looking at what, what's the parts count on that. That looks like it's so going up to an 80 or there. something. It is pretty big. They are dense sprues. Um, I've got the first sprue here, so I'm seeing numbers in the in the 20s I up to am 30. Up to 48. Yeah. So I think 50, around 50. Around 50. Yeah. It's quite it's quite an involved kit. Yeah. One in of the stark annoying contrast things. to the previous Contempt of Dread, not in one of these. Very different. That but, was like six pits. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and for me, they have a place. Yeah. Oh, very much. I, I, w I wish they they released more of that mm. stuff. They did a range, didn't they? Of the yeah, kind of like they had the, an easy to build range with the eighth edition. Yeah. Yeah. And they they were really good. You didn't want multiple of the same kits, yeah. but one of each was fine. Absolutely, yeah, mm. yeah. I'm, I'm, I've, I've still got one of the, those Redemptors really pleased with, yeah. and quite a lot of the, quite a lot of the miniatures um, from elsewhere in that range. One of the things that's slightly annoying about this is they've made the arms slightly differently. So I've got two um, Contemptors already that I've magnetised all the arms so they slide off. They've made the joints at the uh, uh, shoulders. Oh, so the joint is different, not the arm. The arm looks yeah, the, the arm same. looks exactly the same, but, but instead of having a, a flat joint that goes there which then the weapon just plugs onto and that's yeah. fine, which is super easy to magnetise. And yeah. lately they've been doing it so there's a little recess for the magnet. It's so easy. Right. Um, this one has, the weapons have a circular piece that slides up into a piece that has two bits that clasp either side of it. Right. And does that allow for some, art, some presumably? It allows you to alter the weapon down and up a bit, but it's going to be... I'm going to try and assemble it and then cut it so I've still <laughs> so got the magnets the magnet in, in the same place. Yeah, 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 yeah. But really looking forward to building that model. I'm going to try and do a really interesting pose because I've mm. got one of those plastic ones we spoke yeah. about who's very static. Yeah. So I'm going to hopefully build this doing some kind of cool lean back gun pose or something right. like that. See, of all of the of all of the models in here, this mm. is the one I like the least. So yeah, and this is the one I'm looking forward to the most. And that's um, probably and, the... And, and, and I'll tell you what, the, the Contempt of Dreadnought, it's mm. the aesthetic. It just doesn't look like it belongs in the same force as the rest of the It's thing. weird because it is so different to the modern 40k Dreadnought. 
Yeah, it's it's so different. The box yeah. dreadnought that we all remember from the Dawn of War video game. Yeah, 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 yeah. And 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 the other the many dreadnought variants yeah. in the mod. And then this thing looks like it's from a different IP. See, I think it's because I've got all the Forge World dreadnoughts as well, and they're all similar to this. Right. They're all yeah. kind of like the curve. Those Forge World dreadnoughts, stuff. they're broken, by the way. They, they are pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But yeah, this is the one I'm looking forward to most, partly because I think it'll be interesting to model. Um, yeah. And it's a real contrast, as I say, to the other parts of this kit, which are not at all modelling dreams, like those tactical no. marines don't look at all like I'm going to have fun modelling them. But these look brilliant to model with. Uh, but that's part of the difference between us, isn't it? You yeah. like a model that you can quickly stick together yeah. and get it on yeah. the battlefield, whereas I'm going to spend two days cutting the sprues out. Um, anything with a parts count over 20, I'm, I'm, yeah, really, yeah. I'm really uncomfortable with. I'm just like, mm, time, effort, th think thinking. I'm going to use my top brain for that. Well, exactly. I'm not sure you're going to like this one because I don't know what the model count, the parts count for this is. But... Can you just clarify that the you're getting, a, 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 unlike the monopoles one we had before, there's yep. a lot of weapon options. Oh, so that. weapon options on there. There is a twin auto cannon, a twin as cannon, a multi melter, a power fist, and a twin heavy bolter. What about those butcher things that people like? No, none of that stuff. None of the none of the weird esoteric ones. Because right. I imagine Forge World still probably sell the arms for those, but the arms aren't compatible with this model. So I'm not sure what they're doing there. Right. <laughs> okay. Forge World still sell all the Legion specific bodies. Right. But they can't have these arms stuck on them, and these can't have the mm. arms. So it seems a, 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 I suspect they have. The arms might work. They are, I haven't modelled it myself, and yeah. I suspect I'll find a way to make them work. I think the arms will work. The arms, the uh, well, just looking at the arms, they look of a similar size. You know, the shoulder yeah. pad, exactly and there is a little divot in, in them, looks. which which it, so there's a, there's a kind of a keying hole, mm. but it's very slight. So I suspect you can just cut it off somewhere. You just cut the yeah, and just cut yeah. the pin on the shoulder blade, which is what I intend to do. Yeah. Absolutely. I, Time I, I, I will think tell. you probably can. So there's one more thing in here. One more thing. But, and so parts count over 20, I'm less keen on. What we got I mean, here? we've nearly got sprue count over 20. We've got <laughs> right. six sprues here. This is the Spartan. It's basically a giant land raider. A giant land raider. A giant I mean, land raider. A land raider is a big model. This is yeah. probably volume wise twice as big as a land raider. It's longer, it's taller, it's wider. And it's got a big door at the front a la D-Day, right? A massive door. There's some. There's some sprue some big for chunky you. Bits. Some big chunky treads. I'm look trying at them to look tracks. At, I'm trying to find the highest number on this. This thing is a beast. Man, I think they're getting towards bin blade size tracks. It is now. nearly bin blade it. size. Is it? Yeah, it is monstrous. I've got a dinged up bin blade downstairs. I should do something about <laughs> one day. <laughs> yeah, I have a bin blade at home. That that didn't have this many bits. <laughs> You don't go on the old Forge World resin ones, have you? Oh no, thank God for I that. I know that they still exist, they're still out there in the wild. I think they've repeated numbers on these, so I suspect you build the chassis, um, because this, so this no, is the no, with like the Yeah, like with the, some of the Imperial Guard vehicles, it tells you to build the tracks yeah. assembly, and then tells you to build another one. So by the looks of this, um, you will build the basic chassis of your Spartan, um, and there are two other tanks that can be made from a Spartan chassis, oh. but they haven't released any plastic kits for those yet. Forge will right. make them, but I suspect this has been designed, looking at the numbering, that you can do it with this. So I think you can build a Cerberus, which is basically, it takes out the transport capacity, and has a giant great laser dick mm. cannon sticking out <laughs> the front. Big like, it, it looks like one, and it just sticks yeah, yeah, out yeah. the front, and it just fires one big laser shot. And then there's one that has a, it's basically a giant Vindicator. It's got right. a giant, massive wide barrel that points at the sky coming out the front of it. Right. So I suspect they'll release plastic versions of them. So you think the there'll be like another sprue in, in there'll a kit? There'll be another sprue. You'll take out one the of these sprues and add that in. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, this looks massive. It just looks like a, an upscaled Rhino. I mean, the size of the tracks, the size of the side bits. Yeah. Everything about it looks like a giant upscaled version. So. That will take a hell of a lot of building, I suspect. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's one of these things, how many bits of track were on that sprue? Yes. I mean, you, you, you've seen that with the, yeah, with yeah. the track. There's a, there's a lot of track pieces here. There's a lot of things that you can get wrong. One on of the interesting bits, quite, looking at this, this is the side of the tank. Mm -hmm. And these are also other. There are another two side bits of the tank. So the sides are in multi-parts. Right. So instead of one side, you've got a 
mash together to make a side. That sounds like it's going to be annoying. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I think the, the rhino worked like that. There was an inside and an outside There's an inside piece. and outside. This is the two sides, the, the front and the back of the side. Yeah, They're supposed to be a big yeah. straight panel. Follow the instructions, right? Yeah, basically. And then get frustrated. Yeah, unlike IKEA, 40k models, I highly recommend following the instructions. Well, we'll see what the instructions we are will, like. Hopefully yeah. they're in the style of modern. Also, we have two weapon sprues for it. So we have Oh wow, this. the weapons weren't on those. The weapons weren't First on those. Four or five so sprues. this is there are two quad las cannons on there. Quad las cannons. Quad las cannons. You need eight las cannons on this bad boy. <sighs> eight las cannons on one chassis. And then on here you can have Oh no, you, you get to take two two las cannons that stick out the front as well. So it has ten las ten cannons. Ten las cannons, right. Or you can have heavy flamers, there's a havoc launcher, there's a multi melter. There's well, Havoc Launch is better in 7th edition. That feels like a nonsense weapon. Yeah, it's it's a chaos these. weapon in 40k, but you can have it on these. You can have it on these, right? Okay. Uh, then there's, you can have a combi bolter on the top of your <laughs> giant 8 las cannon tank. You can have a combi bolter on there. Daka, daka, I mean, daka. that is a very dense sprue. And it can have a dozer blade. One of my fears, because um, I haven't read the full rule book yet, because it's still in here, is the 7th edition rules of... If you drive a vehicle over a bit of terrain on a one, you it can't it. move for the rest of the game. Oh, wow. So I'm hoping that this giant six sprue kit of 500 point tank does not get Have mobilized on a roll of a one when it drives over a hedge. Does a blade special rule? Yeah. Who knows? Yeah, who knows? Right. So now you've, re you've reached the divider. I've reached the lovely divider, which isn't as lovely as you would hope, is it? Unless the flip side is more exciting. The flip side isn't that exciting. The flip side is, oh, look what you could make out of your models. Mm. I like a nice bit of art. Yes. From the Custodes box, I've got a really nice piece of art, which I've actually got in the wall of my, of my office right. at work. I, I, I like the fact they put art on them. Yeah. Um, it's, it's they normally really get dinged nice up, though. They normally got they like, do, a whole yeah. sum of sprues. And this, yeah, you can see the black side because it picks it all up. Yeah, you can see yeah. loads of dings. But that, that, it's doing its job. It's protecting it the bits underneath from being scraped by. Oh, it's interesting. This is actually his advertising as well, because these models at the bottom you don't have in this box. Oh. I thought you would have, but you've got the Rhino, very similar to a normal Rhino with slightly different fronts. The uh, Sikaran battle tank. I have a big Forge World resin one. I'm now thinking, mm, I'd much prefer a plastic one. Mm. And the bigger one in the middle there. Which, Does that uh, mean they're coming out in plastic? They are already re uh, revealed in plastic and coming. That beastie big thing in oh, there. I really want one. You really want one? Is that <laughs> more do. expensive than this box? I think it's going to be... I think it's... I think it might be 90 quid, so you can pick one up for like 75 quid. I don't have one, but From I, I want eyes. one. <laughs> it's 40k rules of trash, unfortunately. Because yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a tank this big, and you can't manoeuvre it around the battlefield at all. You can't fit it through buildings or anything. Boo. So you've got that. Oh, and this is an interesting thing at the bottom. I'll show you in here. Look, it's got, a, it's got your rule book secured, so it can't mm. run around inside there and get dinged up. And it has little side pockets. Containing your bases. Bases. That doesn't look like enough bases there, so there's probably more there's, to there's come. There's another side pocket. Yeah, we've got a bigger base. Dreadnought base. We have a... Legion transfer, transfer sheet. sheet. This one is Imperial Sons of Fist. Horus and Imperial Fist. They're your only options in there. Really? Yeah. They've And they've only released the upgrade sprues for those two as well, because they're the two in right. the artwork for the box. Right, they're big old rule book there. They are. Let's see what else is in here. Your classic white, although, you take a look at them, I reckon they look they look slightly bigger than your classic GW white dice. No, they're not, mate. I have millions of these from all the unboxings I've done. <laughs> these are these are your standard, is it 9 or 12 mil? Yeah, something, something like that. that. And yeah. we've got more bases there. More bases. And our instruction booklet. One disappointing thing. It's not in colour. It's not in colour. Boo! How do I know which bit's not to glue so you can still manoeuvre them and stuff? How do you know which that, bits you've just Do you know glued? what? Games Workshop are, are really leading the pack. Yeah. When it comes to instructions it's with their things I say on the other unboxings. And, and that's quite disappointing. That is, yeah. Because I'm not saying they're poor instructions. Yeah. They're, they're clearly not as good as the ones that they normally but put But it's really good because it usually shows you you're going to glue this bit and then the next image, the bit you've just glued is in blue. Yeah. So you can like you can see how that yes. should work and where it's glued. It's a really clever idea. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. So yeah, black and white instructions. Not a fan. Not 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 a fan. You, and GW, it's got pitch up, bro. Rules in the back, which actually look like 
fuller rules than normal. Yeah, it's much fuller rules than normal. Oh, the rules that you normally get in there. Yeah, it's not just uh, this. Uh, you, this is a proper, so you can play with this box, I believe. It's got full points. It's got full weapon stats and everything there. So that's the end of the box. That is the end of the box. Has it got anything useful inside? It's not a terrain piece like anything else. Uh, no, no. Use it as a crib the for your the baby. Is telling you how to paint your models. Yeah. They want you to do Imperial Fist and Sons of Horus. Yellow is not my colour, man. God, no. Even with an airbrush, you don't want to. And the last thing in the box is this rule book, and that is how thick it is. That is a good... Oh, I mean, from my gauging, that's about eight inches, but I reckon it may be an inch and a half thick. We're going to tear the... Are we going to have a look? I'm going to have a quick... You're going to have a quick look. look. Are, you, are, you, are you actually going to use this book, then? Um, I don't well, reckon its retail can, value will drop much if the cellophane's off. <laughs> <laughs> it comes with a bit of stuff at the back, bit of advertising, advert. some Horus Heresy books. Mm. Not the best books in the world, but also not the worst. I've read or well, listened to most of them, I haven't actually read any of them. And we have... Oh, idiot sheets. Reference sheets. Have you got strength versus toughness charts? It's weapon skill versus different. weapon skill? It's slightly different to it used to be. Ooh. So now you can actually hit somebody on if a bloodthirster with his weapon skill ten attempts to hit a a zombie with his weapon skill six, it actually gets to hit on a two plus, whereas it never used to be able to go down that far. Oh really? Yeah, they've changed the to hit chart. Right. The wound chart is how it used to be. So unlike modern forty k, a strength two weapon can't wound something with toughness six or yep. higher. Yeah. Which which I actually quite like. It makes vehicles yep. so you can't just yep. las gun a vehicle to death. You can't shoot a title with yeah, a Yeah, it's gun. one of the things that's made number of shots yeah. really really powerful. It's got a few other things in there that we don't like, like the vehicle damage table. <laughs> I... <laughs> oh! Oh I didn't realise this is Oh yes, it's fold open. It's fold open. I was too I was too sucked into the charts. It's got the main new thing in here is reactions and it gives you some reactions. Reactions are what they're aiming for 30k to make it a little more interactive than, say, 40k. So during the opponent's turn, um, during each phase of the opponent's turn, there are only three phases in a turn in 30k. Movement, shooting, and close combat. The what do you do wizarding? Uh, wizarding is made much simpler, and it's made so if your wizarding is a shooty attack, in the shooting phase you just do some wizarding. You don't even need to roll a psychic test. You, you just wizard. You just wizard. Your Boom. wizard can do wizard, and he knows all the powers available to him. All of them? He knows all of them. Nice. There's not very many. I think a chart node has maybe four on, but he knows right. those four, and he yep. can choose to do them Does as he Does he have to track magic points? Doesn't have to track magic points? It's nice. really simple. You can, if you wish, when casting a power, you can choose to risk rolling. Risk it. Push it. Push if it. If you roll well, then you get a bit more damage out of it, or a bit more range or something. If you roll badly, then you suffer perils and your head explodes. False chaos, mate. Yeah. But it's much, awesome. much simpler. Right. But you get okay. these reactions. So the enemy gets one reaction they can do in each of your phases. And it's things like, if you shoot me, mm -hmm. I can move my unit. Oh. If you Ooh, charge that's me, a bit cheeky. If you charge me, I could overwatch by shooting you. Or I could move my unit away from you. You only get one reaction per enemy phase. Right. But it makes the game a lot more interactive. So this this is new to this. This is new to, to this. To clarify, Horus Heresy as a seventh edition legacy item yeah. has been around. Yeah, it is and very. The basis of it is seventh edition forty k. Eighty percent of it. Is but the this book contains some updates. Yeah. Some refreshments. Some updates like the psychic phase is gone, um, and the reactions are added in. They've cleaned up a load of the stuff. It's got universal special rules for those of you that remember them. Uh, yeah, yeah. But they've cleaned all of those up, so that now a load of them have levels in them. So. Feel no pain six plus, feel no pain five plus, feel right, no pain four right. plus. Yeah. So they'll have a number and, next. And that time. language is really persistent. I mean, people yeah. talk about that in 40k all the time. This yeah. model has got a fit of five. Exactly. Up, so up. it uses those. It's got these new reactions in there. They're the main change to the rules, mm -hmm. those and the psychic powers. Um, it's got, I believe, pinning or of some sort. Uh, I'm saying that now. I'm trying to remember. It has a different morale thing, and the morale of a space marine is now six. So they've made it so morale is a lot more important to the game. Right. And there are pinning weapons and such which will stop you doing stuff until your next turn. So oh. they're trying to make it a bit more a bit more World War gamey, I suppose. Yeah. Um, which will be interesting. I haven't played it and I haven't read the rulebook, so I can't. I'm not sure that's going to go down well with the fans. It'll be interesting because this is aimed at slightly different people, I think. I think if right. you're wanting to use your 
you're kind of like your heresy army. You're a bit more like a, a historical war gamer, I think. It's right, kind of, yeah, right, okay. Uh, only a little bit more like one, but a yeah. little bit more like yeah, one. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's what it's aiming at. So I'm just going to have a quick flick. And this this book is huge. I just wanted to see the page count. So page count, not including the obvious advertising. We are at 334 That'll pages. That'll keep you going for a while. I want to hear someone to eat. It apparently covers a massive amount of the lore. Because obviously there have been going first. So the Horus Heresy book series had, I think, 60, maybe 61 yeah, they main They really spun books. it out though, right? And then there are now eight Siege of Terror books. So this apparently contains an awful lot of those lore, uh, of the lore from those books in mm. here. Um, and also, for those of you who have played um, 30k originally, uh, they used to have each they used to bring out the Horus Heresy books, which were the big black books we spoke yeah. of. And they used to have a lot of story baked into them. Apparently, a lot of that has made it across to this. Right. Uh, which is quite nice, because they had a lot of interesting and, lore. And in. that's, a, that's a high production value book. This I is a very that. high production value I can value smell book. the plastic yeah. in babe. I mean, I don't know how much this would sell for. We'll come on to value, but you can see it's got a nice shiny, glossy pictures yeah, yeah, and yeah, stuff. Yeah. It's got loads of kind of like... I like these big plate arts and such. Mm. Yeah. It's got all kinds of that, and it's a very high production quality book. I reckon they'd sell you this book. Now, I can tell you that as a man whose real life job is a librarian, yeah. that book is far too heavy for its mounting, and it is going to, yeah. it is going to sag. It's also far too big a rook a book to bring to your gaming table. Yeah. You're not going to have this on the edge of your gaming table no. to flick through for rules, are you? No. And even if that's stitched, that book yeah. is coming. The end papers are going oh, to tear on you. you tell me whether it's stitched or not. Oh, that took some arm strength there. <laughs> is it stitched? It is stitched. It is stitched. That's a good point. Yeah. You can see, you go, look, look. If you see here, you can see the kind of folded leaf. I don't know if you can, whether it's focused. But you can see the pages are, are, are in are in groups. Instead of being just a big wadge of Instead glue. Instead of just being a big wadge of glue. Yeah, which I fall mean, out immediately. Yeah, yeah. Now, it's still... So that means it's it's they're stitched through there. On a machine, not by hand. Oh, yeah. But then there's still the question of, in that hole there, is what is it stuck to? Yeah. And how how well will that hold? And that book and is the, very heavy. The, yeah. There's just, there's just too much weight here pulling on this yeah. spine and what's likely to happen is what you might never realize is this sheet of paper here glued across the two things this is actually holding most of the weight ah, and that's going to rip so that bit there will come away and then you've seen those books where the whole yeah. the cover has kind of come loose from the back yeah. that's yeah uh -huh. replacing the end papers there's just a bit of bit of stiff paper holding it all together well, there is that there book, there and you, you now know how books are made. <laughs> yeah, a little bit of how books are yeah. made. Um, I mean, how much do you think that would cost when they release it? So, you know, I reckon that'll be a 50 quid book. I don't know whether they will, because I think it'll be like a special edition thing. Possibly, I don't know. They may have already released it. I, I don't remember seeing it as a standalone item yet, because they want to obviously push the box, don't yeah, they? Yeah, but they like to do that kind of limited edition stuff. Yeah. You've got to buy the big box to get one, hold of it. One thing to point out is you've got this massive rule book here, you can't build an army out of this. There are no unit rules in here whatsoever that I know of. Oh, really? None at all. So they brought out two Legion books. They brought out Hereticus Astartes and Legionnaire, Legionnaire Astartes or something like that. So basically the Traitor Astartes and the Loyal Astartes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And each of those books is £45. Ah. Uh -huh. And they are monstrous. They're bigger than this. They are right. absolutely massive. And they, and they contain codices. all the rules for nine chapters of Space Marines in each one. Um, and and then Dark they're... Angels are in both? Uh, well, you would think so. <laughs> well, interestingly, all the Legions do have rules for playing them as... As Chaos. As Chaos or as Loyalists. So there are, oh, right. there are Loyalist Sons of Horus, for instance. But it has rules in there that are special rules that you can take if you're playing Sons of Horus, but you want them to be Loyalist. It's got right. their own little slight... Oh, that's you can nice. take. I think there's a warlord trait you can take for loyalist, and there's one you can take for traitor, and right. that just helps differentiate the armies. Things like you can take traitor blood angels if you wish. Yeah, uh, yeah. Not that that would ever happen. Don't even think it. Mm. But yeah, so you it's can't play the vampires, mate. They're clearly for that. Chaos. Yeah. <laughs> no space marines are good guys. <laughs> right. <laughs> None of them are good guys. None of them are the good guys. <laughs> right. So, um, so the appeal of this set, right? Yeah. 
there's, there's, a, there's a few things. One is there's obviously a tremendous sense of value yeah. in here. You know, in terms of the, for Games Workshop, yeah. not for anybody else, the amount of plastic they're giving you, or more importantly, the number of models. Mm. Now, now we've looked at those models, we can see why. Yeah. These are, sim these are fairly simple models. Yeah, I did not think that the tactical squad or the... The, the degree to which squad. they are exactly Yeah, they are the same. very simple yeah. models. So they um, made, instead of making... We always hear that the moulds are the expensive bit for a mm. plastic thing. Instead of making four moulds, they've made one mould. They've made one mould. So that's obviously guys. a massive cost saving for them. Yeah, and, and, and the upgrade sprue. And presumably if you buy a squad of 20, you yeah. get one of those upgrade sprues and four of yeah, these. Yeah, I would assume so. So, you know, that's whereas you compare that to the Devastator kit, yeah. which is three sprues this side with five guys. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, very <laughs> different. Very different. So, you know, you, you can see what that's that Value is tricky. Like... Um, We've we said the book might be 40, 50 quid if they release that. Yeah. The the Spartan, I reckon that's going to be the same price point as that other new tank, which is the Kratos. Oh, I've remembered. Was that, that around 70? It was around 70 at shops. So if you're buying it from Games Workshop, I think it was possibly 80, maybe wow. 90, somewhere around there. Yeah. So you're yeah. getting one of those, that's going to be at least that price. The Dreadnought around 50? Dreadnought 40, I'd say. Yeah. Yeah, I'd say 40. I mean, they've been selling that. The prices Mono creep up with one every... for like 35 quid. Have they? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I don't... For, for Games 35. Workshop, you, you can't... Oh, it's... This is about half price. I, I, think I, I only play really Games Workshop games. I've played various others in the past, but for certainly big box, I've never bought a giant box set for any other game. Mm. And this, to me, is unbelievable value. I mean... By I mean, GW standards. By GW standards. What value is this by other standards? You play... I'm sitting in Michael's room here. He plays a lot of other games. What other, what does this compare to value-wise? Um, for what, 40, 50 infantry and a couple of vehicles? 50 infantry, a couple of vehicles. So to be fair, you compare that to other games like, like Bolt Action, mm. their starter sets are pushing towards £100. Yep. 30 infantry and two vehicles. Okie dokie. A Games Workshop can rarely compete. No, no. With, now, so that'd be a £100 set, whereas this is a £200 set. Well, no, this is... £180 from Games Workshop, I paid £141 so, next day posted. From from a third party? From a third reseller. party. But, but to compare one with another, we're yeah. talking about full retail. Yeah, so £180. So £180. So, you, so that's about twice the price yeah. of, a bot, of, of something comparable. Mm. But it, within its own context, yeah. it's, you know, it's... Yeah, because you're getting, you're getting you things like the rulebook. That is a very good production quality rulebook. Now, whether you want everything in this rulebook, I, I, know I, I think that that's terrible. That's I am terrible. never going to read 90% of this book. But books like that, as a librarian, yeah. I just look at them and think these should never be made. Yeah. These are books that will not be, cannot be read. No, nobody and is reading the law. Certainly not in as this a rule book. book. No. Certainly not as a rule book. You, you can read that in bed carefully. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> a rule book, I want a little flimsy paperback thing that I can put on the table, I can throw around yeah. and it won't fall apart. Absolutely, yeah. And if experimenting with the things like having those like core rules books, you know, yeah. they want enough no. of the rules. There needs to be there needs to be somewhere in between. And you know, we're moving back to a position which is, I think, part of the appeal of this is ninth edition is increasingly becoming a filofax type oh. situation where you're gonna people are gonna be cutting pages out of white yeah. drawer and putting them in ring binders because they've got so many different sources yeah. of information. You know, I mean, I very much remember all of that. Mm. Um, and 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 what I think is completely mad about this is that seventh edition has been built as a simple way to play the game. Oh, and it is mad. So <laughs> seventh edition players, Games Workshop were at their lowest ebb at the end of seventh edition. Forty k was nearly dying. I was playing Infinity at the time. I'd had enough of forty k. Yeah, was yeah, just yeah. Stupid. I think it was the Middle Earth stuff was holding the company together. Yeah, yeah. Financially. It was just utterly stupid. They'd released all kinds of formations, all kinds of mm. utter crap. And then they're selling this as the simpler version. And, but it is on base. The rules are more complex. The base rules are more complex. But you're playing with a load of Space Marines versus a load of yeah. Space Marines. And all the rules are on the little bit of thing. Like if we look at a profile, I think it's in this book. In the instruction book. In the instruction book. We look at a profile and that little bit there, that's all your rules that model has. Yeah. And they're there. And it's got some universal special rules that it will tell you about. But there's nothing else. There's nothing like, oh, your detachment is this. It gains all of this other stuff. Yes. It's, it's much simpler. Everyone's using Space Marines. Everyone's fighting Space yeah. Marines. You know exactly 
how it all works. So it is a lot simpler there, but it's what are they just going to throw a load more raw shit at it? I suspect so. Do you? Um, I, want, I wonder about that, to be honest. I, um, I mean, oh, I suppose it'll depend on how well it sells. Yeah. If it sells really well, then they'll put out more stuff because they'll assume it will sell really well. But yeah. it would also ruin some of the appeal. A lot of the appeal of Heresy is people like playing their Space Marines versus other Space Marines. They presume it will be a bit more balanced. Yeah, but I think and also it will there's, be there's in some people regard. feel that it's um, it's a it's a it's a battle that matters. Yeah, in in a pickup forty k game, mm. and I bring my orcs, you bring your tower, we we fight yeah. for these meaningless objectives. Mm. So again, because the Horus Heresy is so well known as a story, yeah. it's like no, no, no. I'm Space Wolves and your Thousand Sons and this is where it went wrong. Exactly. That's what I said when I said earlier that this is a bit more similar to a historical game in that yeah, regard. Yeah. I think people treat it more like that. They yeah. when they're playing their Space Wolves and Thousand Sons, they're properly into using those two legions and they hate each other and such. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. also in Heresy you don't see people playing their ultramarines as white scars. No. I'm playing no. my blood because, the, because there, But also there isn't as much need to, right? No, exactly, because they're using 90% of the units are the same. So yeah. I've looked into Blood Angels Heresy because I'm playing Blood Angels. Mm. I have my Sanguineous model. I'm going to use him. Um, and there are five units that I can take that aren't in everybody else's book. Right. There's Sanguineous, there's two um, other characters, and then there's, I think, maybe it might be six, there's a Dreadnought and two... Um, units of jump packs, which are unique to Blood Angels. Yeah. Other than that, they just use all the rest of this stuff is exactly the same as an, mm -hmm. any other Legion. And they're all pulling from that same selection of God knows how many, of probably like 80 Space Marine unit choices. Really? Yeah, so that massive... Wow. But everyone can take those same 80, and they're the same stats. So there's hopefully some more balance in there. Time will obviously tell. Yeah, yeah, and hopefully it's a better position, even if they do bring out more stuff yeah. later. You can opt out of it because the base game is yeah very there's much. There's a problem with 40k and opting out. And saying, well, the problem with the supplements bring in new rules, but they fix imbalances as well. Exactly. So it's, it's not so easy to just say, well, we're we're only playing yeah. the base game. We're only playing Codex. We're only playing. Yeah. It's like no, no, all of this stuff is out of kilter. It's hard. That's not from to a 40k. Play. It's, yeah. It's Excuse similar me. to. I mean, they release the kind of like card games and stuff. I always think of there's a company called Fantasy Flight who releases card games. Yeah. And every month they release something new for that card game. Yeah. And you don't have to do worry with booster packs. You get the whole of that release every month to add to your collection. <laughs> right, and you kind of need to but do if that. But if you stop buying that for a couple of months, you're then behind and it's really hard to catch up. Because right. some of those releases are only available for a couple of months. The, yeah, 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 yeah. And 40k is similar. If you stop getting the new rules and stop absorbing the new rules, you just, you're out. You just, right. can't, you just can't keep up. You go, oh... Yeah. Yeah. You leave for a couple of months, you come back in, you're like, what are the current rules? And they're like, well, these are these rules that were added here. Yeah. But you remember those rules from a couple of months back that altered the thing that's there. And right. there's no way, unless you keep yeah, on yeah. top of it, there's no way yeah. of just picking it the up. The worst kind of living rule book. Oh, completely, yeah. yeah. A big part of the appeal of this, Mike, is the, it's the nostalgia hit, right? It's yeah. it's the whippy sticks, it's the templates, it's the it's even the scatter dice. It's suddenly attractive yeah. again, you know. It's like it's that's the 40k been, you remember. It's got, those things have been rattling around in a tin. Yeah. <laughs> a dice tin for years. Suddenly, I don't need a new one. I got my old one. Went so well. The amount of me. scatter dice I have stored in a cupboard at home <laughs> when I got rid of them from 40k. I'm Waiting. not throwing these away. One one day they'll be back, um, and that and that kind of nostalgia. Seven, I think if if you're getting back into this, I would brace yourself for it. I mean, it's important yeah. to remember, right, that seventh was the edition that people fled from. Exactly, <laughs> um, and that is what this game is fundamentally. But if you played 40k for the past 20 years, this is the version you mostly remember. Yeah, compared to ninth, but it's important to remember that it wasn't all that. Yeah, it is. It's very strange. I mean, so I picked this box up mainly because one of my best mates, Paul. Yeah, he's picked this box up and he's gone all in. He's bought this. He's bought three kind of like old style rhinos they've released. Right, he's right, right. Yeah, all yeah. the gubbins to go with it, and he's making a Sons of Horus army. Great. He's a good painter. He likes to spend his time modelling. It's yeah. going to look awesome. And he can't even use them in 40k because they're Black Legion, by the way. Yeah, right? exactly. He can, so and this, is, this is 30k. For... And it's weird because a lot of these models are usable in 40k, but. Mm. They're not exact replacements. Like, you've got your tactical squad there, but you'd never take that as a tactical squad. It's got no special weapon, no heavy weapon. Yeah. So you couldn't just grab that sprue and go, here's my tactical squad. No. Or you could, but it would be a very bad tactical squad. Yes, yes. The Terminator's perfectly usable. 
They're good. The Spartan has rules in the Forge World compendium. Oh, the Imperial Yeah, the Imperial armor, armor thing. The yeah. rules aren't good, you wouldn't want one. The Dreadnought is usable, but it doesn't have the exact weapon loadouts you'd want. The, the groovy ones at the Butcher Arrays, or whatever's yeah, meta at exactly. the moment. Exactly. So it's, it's really tricky. So this box set is usable in 40k, mm. but it's certainly not ideal for 40k. Right. Um, so my mate Paul has bought it, so I'm going to play some 30k with him. Oh, yeah. Uh, I've got untold Blood Angels at home. Yeah. I've got 40 Tactical Marines. I've got probably 10 Rhinos. So I'm not going to need to buy any of that stuff. I've got a load of Terminators I could use. I've got right. all the characters I'd need. Are Blood Angels got. red back then? Yeah, they're red. They're exactly the same scheme. Right, because a lot of people have got different uniforms. Yes. Yeah. I've got Vindicators, I've got Predators, I've got all this right. stuff, which is all usable in 30k. Right. Um, I've got some stuff like a model rep quaffly, like Sanguinary Guard. They've got a similar equipment loadout to the special Forge World jump pack unit you can use in Heresy. Right. So I might not be able to take it to a tournament, but to play it on Mate Pool, yeah, you get a feel for the game. Perfectly usable. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, Scratch yeah, and the I've got Sanguinius that Paul and a couple of other mates got together and bought for my birthday. Yeah. I, I'm going to say it was that's, first year of COVID. That's the so resin golden boy, right? Yeah, so at least two, probably coming up to three years ago. He's not painted yet. But you, that's because you said you need to finish Mortarian. Mortarian is finished. Mortarian and is finished. It's, it's, a, it's an intimidating model. You've got this lovely model. It's 100 quid or whatever it is now for a single, slightly bigger Space Marine. That's a lot of money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. I want to do it justice. He's my prime And it's quite brittle as well. Yeah, and it is, but you don't want to drop it. No. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> So I want to do him justice, so I'm going to paint him and I'm going to play the game and see how it goes. But I'm really reticent that 7th edition wasn't a good edition of 40k. No. The base rules of 9th edition, much as 9th edition is now a bit of a quagmire of rules soup and just piled on bloat, the base rules are really good. I much prefer the base rules of that to more or less any of the older editions. Right. They're much simpler, they're much easier to teach, but the codexes are an utter... I'm, I'm, I've an said utter it before, I think, yeah. I think Index 8th edition yeah. was the best this game's been for a while. Yeah. I know people like more rules, but hmm. there are so many. And 8th uh, edition, and that, when that came out, was fab, as you say, Index. It had flaws. And 9th edition, the actual base rules, fix a couple of issues of 8th. And yep. if you just had Indexes, it would be lovely and simple, but the codexes yeah. are so complicated. Um, so I'm much for the ninth edition rules, so I'm really reticent about playing the seventh edition rule set. I'm going to read the rules in this book, see what's changed. Mm -hmm. Certainly going to play a couple of games. But there's some interesting ideas in there. Yeah, yeah. The fact they give you the reactions are really yeah, like yeah, makes the yeah. game a lot more interactive. In the yeah. enemy player's turn, you're getting to do a load of stuff, and there's a lot of the additional rules they've added in are reactions. Mm. So each legion gets its own reaction it can do, but it can only do it once a game. Yeah. And then yeah. you get one of them. So it's not like there's a massive amount of rules bloat there. It's yeah. Just to give them a little bit more distinctiveness. Yeah. Um, so I'm really looking forward to that aspect. It's but, quite an interesting idea. Yeah. And the fact that I can use the models I've already got is... Yeah. So that's the get, big get selling the point. So what are you going to do with this lot then? You're, you're so, going to make the tank and the dreadnought? So the dreadnought I'm definitely keeping. I'm definitely keeping at least five of the terminators. Yeah, and that was kind of like the the tipping point. I was like, I really like you want... nearly covered the price of the box. Yeah, well, I'm thinking to myself, the tank for dreadnought. That's the dreadnought's forty quid to buy. Um, the, the terminators, they'll be thirty quid to buy. So that's eighty quid, seventy, mm. eighty quid. The box was one hundred and forty. Yeah. So I'm going to buy it. I'm going to read the rules of thirty k. See if there's anything else I want to keep. Yeah. And then I'll just sell the rest. It's <laughs> just sell on the bits you don't want. Yeah. yeah. Just sell on the bits I don't want. Yeah. Right? I'm I am not the richest person in the world. I can't afford to have a load of stuff sitting around. Also, I don't have There's space. There's not that much space under the bed, right? You've got a kid yeah, now. Exactly. I don't have that much space. I can't fit another 40 tactical marines on my shelves. Yeah. And yeah. to be honest, I don't want to. I would encourage <laughs> everyone to do that. Yeah. Is to look is is to not just keep collecting this stuff. Yeah, just sell the stuff just you don't sell want. It. I've been doing it for the past four or five years now. I'll yeah. buy a box set. I'll keep one or two of the models that I want yeah. from it because they're such a good deal. Yeah. yeah, you keep them on the shelf for three to six months and then yeah. look back at it and say, right, get rid of this. Yeah. So uh, fi final final thoughts on it. I, w I would say looking at this is at, at the pr price point, despite everything we just said, yeah. is I would, I would say think long and hard about whether this is what you yeah. want because although it's a lot of Marines and it is some nice tanks and dreadnought and so forth, yeah. they're quite basic models, the Marines. Yep. They're the not rule book, particularly usable in 40k. The, yeah, they're not they're not that great in 40k. It is a high price point. If you want the tank and the dreadnought and the terminators, yeah. then go for it. If you want to play seventh edition, then go for it. Yeah. Yeah, so this will be 
better than 7th edition 40k because they have fixed a load of the problems that we have. it up. Yeah, and there are, isn't all the bloat. 7th edition, when it first came out, we all read it and thought, oh, this is really cool, and then they just ruined it. Right. So this will hopefully be a lot better than that. We'll stick yeah. a hopefully caveat in there. Yeah. So, so, so in terms of in terms of who this is who this is for, who who should buy this? If you want the models, then great. Yeah. If you want the seventh edition hit, then great. But don't get I would say don't get caught up in the hype because yeah. I think a lot of this is well, apart from those key things. It's quite vanilla stuff. Yeah. I wouldn't buy you know this I mean? as a starting Space Marine army for forty k. No. Because none of this would get used in maybe the dreadnought. Possibly the Terminators in certain chapters. The characters are made groovy looking yeah, characters. Yeah, the characters, but the Marines, the Spartan, I mean, it's you are not going to use those. You can use them in 40k, but you're not going to use them in 40k. Not if you're playing anything like a competitive game. Right. They are not, right. not good yeah. choices. And they're not good models for that either. They don't have the options on the kits to make No, no, that, that's my. Yeah. That's my thing. It's like those, those Space Marines, they're not, they're not that yeah. great. It's a really nice big tank. If you want to buy it from a modelling thing, that tank is a lovely, great, big, plastic, massive model. It used to cost like 250 yeah. quid from Forge World, and it's now a lovely plastic version that looks a lot crisper, a lot better. So if you want a modelling thing, that's also another reason yeah. for buying. Yeah. I just I just want to make the point, I think, the, the price point is a bit deceptive yeah. in terms of the relationship to value. Yeah. Because of, of its 40k application, which a lot of people... Mm. It's not... You, you'd be... If I hadn't seen the sprue, I'd have been quite surprised at how basic that Marine squad is. Yeah, that is. Marine squad has really disappointed me, to be honest. <laughs> yeah. I was thinking, oh, I might keep ten of those, make those. I'm now thinking, I'm not keeping any of those. <laughs> because you've got to go away and buy the upgrade sprue yeah. to get them the weapons. And... I might keep five now, just yes. so I can have those five poses. I was thinking about, yeah. about getting on eBay and buy five of these. As I always say in the unboxing, I bloody hate monopose kits. Really? <laughs> really right. really dislike them. Guys, we've been we've been talking for ages. Any, yep. any final thoughts, uh, Mike? Any, anything uh, that, that, that you yeah, haven't I'm that looking forward to. to reading the rules, that's one thing. Well, yeah, yeah. I'm looking forward to seeing what they've done, and I'm really looking forward to making my dreadnought. That's the first hey. thing I'm going to do. <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you for watching. Take care. Bye-bye. If you're still here and you're looking for ways to support the channel, there's obviously a lot of ways down in the description, but a key way is to use our affiliate links to Whaling Games and others. You buy your models from them, it doesn't cost you a penny more, and we earn a little bit of commission. Thank you. Let's get that aircon back on. Yeah, 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 yeah.